Hey y'all, this is Rebecca Fago at the South Florida Science Center and Aquarium. Hope you all are doing well. We're here taking care of all of our animals, making sure everyone's happy, healthy, and well-fed. Uh, today, I really wanna talk about our American alligators. As you can see, I just have a baby gator here. I have a male and a female. Uh, they are a uh, brother and sister. Uh, they're about five months old right now, and they have these stripes on them when they're young. These guys are cold-blooded reptiles. So these bumpy things you see on their tail, those are what we call scoots. Uh, my turtles are also reptiles, have scoots on their shells. So these guys have what we call reptile scoots that are like armor, armored plates, almost closest thing I can think of to a dinosaur. Uh, and these guys actually, their tail is about the length of their body. So this tail is gonna become a massive weapon for them someday. Uh, but when they're first born, they actually have a lot of predators, including non-relative gators, otters, large bass, um, snakes, all kinds of other predators. So this, uh, these stripes on them really help them to blend in with their environment. And it's not uh, true that moms don't protect her young. The mama actually fiercely protects uh, her babies for about one to three years. Uh, she'll teach them how to hunt, to swim, to ward off other non-relative gators. Uh, and keep her babies safe and healthy. Uh, believe it or not, they, out of probably 80 eggs that are hatched, only two of these guys will make it to adulthood. That's how many predators are out there. Uh, so the mom will try to fiercely protect her young. These guys reach sexual maturity uh, about the same time humans do, about uh, 11 to 15 years old. Uh, at that time, they will be sexually mature and start reproducing. Uh, they usually reproduce sometime in April or May. Uh, and that is actually when they're most aggressive. So if you do like to swim in fresh water around here and you hear hissing or something like that, or see babies, <laughs> that means the mom is probably nearby, so it's time to skedaddle and get out of the water. Uh, but when they're first born, they're actually probably smaller than the palm of my hand, so they grow pretty fast in captivity because we like to feed our alligators a lot of food, but they wouldn't be nearly half this size in the wild at this age. Uh, so yeah, they're born about this smaller than the palm of my hand, but eventually they can be up to a thousand pounds or even 1500 pounds. The female alligators are actually slightly smaller than the males when they're full grown. Uh, but those are very, that's large predators if you think about it. Uh, as they work their way up the food chain, so when they're first born, they're eating little things like crickets and bugs and things like that. But eventually they'll be eating like mice, uh, raccoons, small mammals, and when they're full grown, believe it or not, they can kill and drown up to a 300 pound mammal. Think about that, that's a pretty large mammal. Uh, and they do what we call the kill roll or the death roll. So they take this tail, this tail is very much a weapon for them. So what they do is they grab the animal with their razor sharp teeth, they roll that mammal around in the water and eventually that animal will tire out and suffocate. That's how they can kill, kill and drown up to a 300 pound mammal. If you look at their legs, um, their back feet are webbed. They have four little toes, and that means they are excellent swimmers. So they actually spend majority of their lives in the water. Um, their nose, their eyes, and their ears are right near their snout. So majority of their life, it, their whole body will be immersed in the water with just their little snout sticking up at the surface, and they blend in so well, guys, you wouldn't even see them. You could swim right past them and not see them. Uh, they blend in so well with their environment. So uh, they do bask in the sun to warm up their blood because like I mentioned earlier, they are cold-blooded reptiles, but majority of their life is spent in the water. Um, so another thing I wanted to tell about, talk about are these guys are excellent climbers. If you look at their front feet, they actually have five little toes or fingers, I don't know, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, but these guys are good climbers. They can run pretty quickly as well. Uh, if you're wondering why occasionally humans get bit by gators, I actually believe a lot of times people are out there feeding them in the wild, which is very illegal, guys. You should never feed wild animals in general, but especially alligators. Uh, these guys, like I said, can get up to 1,500 pounds. And if they start getting fed by humans, then they are not going to have fear of humans. They have a natural fear of humans. They lose that fear if they're being fed in the wild. So never feed these guys in the wild, please. Uh, the very occasional times that people are attacked by gators, it's probably because somebody had been feeding them out there. So don't do that. <laughs> um, but really, we're not on their menu, guys. We're really not. They like to eat things like snakes and fish and invertebrates and occasionally a mammal, um, but not very often. So. 
These guys will only keep for about a year. They actually grow up at Gatorama, so we get new babies every year. I've been here over a decade, so this is my 10th batch of baby gators. They all have their unique personalities, just like humans do. Uh, and believe it or not, it seems like we have a lot of alligators here in Florida, but at one time back in the 1970s, we almost hunted these guys off the face of the earth. Uh, we quickly realized that was a mistake. Alligators are actually not only apex predators, they're keystone species. Keystone species in science means they are one of the most important animals living in our Everglades. That is because they build, why I named my tank gator hole, they build something uh, that looks like almost donut holes in the water. And believe it or not, every year, year here in Florida, we have a drought season. Just last year, we came within 22 days of running out of fresh water. But these little holes that they build will stay full of water. And so all the animals in the Everglades have water to drink. Uh, the fish have a place to lay their eggs. All the animals, the birds, the fish, the mammals have food, uh, food sources uh, coming out of those gator holes all thanks to the American alligator. So even though he can actually eat everybody, he's actually keeping everyone, all the endangered birds, mammals, and fish alive uh, during drought season. So thanks to the gator. There is one guy that's, uh, or one animal species that is invasive that is now killing and eating our alligators. Does anyone know who that is? Yep, you're right, it's the Burmese python. These guys are Asian snakes. They get up to 23 feet long. They're indiscriminate about what they eat. And unfortunately, Florida is the most perfect environment for them. Even in drought season, they can bury themselves under eight feet of mud, hiding from hunters, which of course we're encouraging hunters to go out and kill them. Uh, and they're eating our alligators. So before that happened, uh, we didn't have anything eating our alligators. We do have a lot of invasive birds, plants, and animals living here in Florida. And the Burmese python, unfortunately, is kind of like our lionfish uh, in the Atlantic. They're here to stay. Um, so those are the only things that I know of that can actually kill and eat our alligators. These guys, though, they're such amazing animals. They're really not out to get you. No reason to be afraid of them, guys. They are actually prehistoric animals, uh, similar to my sharks. They've survived all five mass extinctions. So incredible animals, very well adapted to their environment. I also wanted to briefly talk about uh, the difference between alligators and crocodiles. So alligators are actually much larger than American crocodiles. Uh, if you're thinking of the Nile crocs, those are a different species. So those guys are massive. They get up to 24 feet in length, whereas our American crocodiles are only about six feet. So these guys, like I said earlier, can get up to 15 feet. Another big difference between American alligators and crocodiles is crocodiles prefer the salt water, guys. Uh, they can actually live in salt and fresh, whereas these guys actually are mostly fresh water. They can occasionally be found in brackish water, but they don't have the glands to secrete the salt from their skin. So if you find them in the ocean, that usually means they're disoriented and sick. They cannot stay there very long. Uh, so that is another big difference between American alligators and American crocodiles. Uh, another big difference is kind of the shape of their snout. Uh, alligators tend to have like a rounded snout, whereas crocodiles have a more pointy snout. Another thing is the way their teeth fit in, like when their mouth is closed, the way their teeth fit, there's almost holes in the back of the alligator's mouth, so they, or sockets, I should say. So they fit right into those sockets, whereas crocodiles, all their teeth are kind of hanging out. Um, so those are two big uh, differences between the American alligators and crocodiles. Um, and of course, the salt and fresh water. Another thing I wanted to mention is these guys can see an incredibly murky water. They have a built-in, uh, it almost looks like contact lenses that come forward like a prism over their eye. So it's like wearing goggles. So they can see an incredibly murky water where we cannot see. So that's another thing to be aware of with alligators. Their brain is about the size of a walnut, so uh, they are not the smartest animals I've worked with, but they are actually more intelligent than people give them credit for. They can be trained, and um, they're pretty interesting. They all are different. Every single batch I've had over the years here at the South Florida Science Center and Aquarium have all had their own little unique personalities. Some are docile, some are pretty feisty and aggressive <laughs> from the moment they're born. It really just depends. Uh, but anyway, I really do want to answer any questions you guys may have for me today. Um, I'm happy to um, stick around and answer anything that you guys, anyone have any questions for me? No, not yet? Okay, but anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys kind of enjoyed checking out our American alligators today. I'm going to be feeding them next. 
They're gonna get some little tiny two day old baby mice. Don't worry, they're not alive. Uh, but do, they do like to eat the mice. It's good for their uh, health to have all the organs and the bones and all the meat. These guys are total carnivores. No fruits and vegetables for these guys. Uh, from the moment they're born, like I said, they eat little crickets and bugs and kind of slowly work their way up the food chain. Um, and please don't be afraid of them. They're really not out to get us. They have more fear of us than we have of them. So I hopefully you learned a few things today. Thank you so much. This is Rebecca Fago, the Aquarium Director, signing out.